Welcome to the startup grind. <laughs> so where do you live now? You have been so many places. I live here, so. Okay. And so why have you lived in so many places? Well, um, are you recording? We are recording. <laughs> <laughs> this is going out to the millions and millions of Yeah, actually, I was born in Korea. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I always make this kind of joke that my, my father, he applied for, uh, for science. But this is, this is recording, so I gotta say, um, my father, he, he had a job in Saudi Arabia in Hawaii. So I was born there. I spent like 16 years in Saudi Arabia, Scotland, Denver. Wow. And, uh, Saudi Arabia. And then, how many languages can you speak then? You must know plenty. Well, I learned Arabic. Okay. So how would you... Is there like anyone who speaks Arabic down here? Can you give us a little? Assalamu alaikum. Keep out. Okay. Uh, kind of hungry, huh? Let's uh, switch. <laughs> and then I attended British school. Mm -hmm. And I learned English and French down there. And now we have our office in Beijing. Okay. So I'm learning Chinese, and I've attended um, Dale Ford Lynch High School, and there I learned um, Japanese as well. So I can speak several different languages, but most of the cases I speak English. Sure. So I'm going to guess that's kind of was the catalyst that you started your company, is this fact that you traveled so much, right. you, you learned so many languages, and that's something you want to support people with? Right. So I got exposed to all different languages and cultures. You know, my, my friends were from all different countries, you know, and the first thing I learned from them is like how to say F for Okay, let's, let's test it out. Let's test it out. Right. So let's start so, with Arabic. It's recording, right? That's okay, that's okay. We'll keep it out. YouTube, right? I'll just be good. Okay, cool. <laughs> so in, in Arabic, uh, it's, right, it's, we say, uh, Kusuma. Oh, right. Let's all say that together. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? In. So no, you, you know, right. <laughs> right. But so tell us, Kat, beginning of the Flito, is this kind of when did you start it? Was this was it a passion of yours to learn languages, or was it just something that happened because of the way your life kind of evolved? So um, I started this kind of business back in 2007. Okay. I um, I came out with this website called Fly King. It was a cross-sourcing translation website. And then um, I got a job in SG Telecom from 2009 to 2012. Yeah. So I worked as a, a startup investor in the daytime. And I worked as, uh, and I founded my own company when I was in SK Telecom. Okay. It was more like inner house venture. So I spent like four years doing the same stuff. Yeah. And then I quit my job back in 2012 and I started this Flitto. Sure. So we're going to get into Flitto in a little bit, but it's a really interesting kind of life story you have. And I think a lot of people here can relate, which is people here are working in a company, they have a dream to start a company, but don't know when to kind of jump. You were at a great company, SK, and you made that big decision to kind of go into the unknown and start your own company. Right. Walk us through that. Was it easy? Was it hard? Did you, was it seamless? Did you think about it for a long time? It must have been a tremendous decision for your life. Right, so I never thought of myself starting my own business. I never thought about it in my life. Sure. And I came out with this idea a cross-sourcing translation platform. So I asked my company, SKT, to start this business. And no one actually really cared about it. So I uploaded my idea in every website I visit. Is there like anyone who are interested in this business? And no one out there. So what I thought is like, you know, it's time for me to start my own business to prove that my idea is working. So um, that's, how I, that's how I started my business. But in the first place, it was really scary, you know. I had no money. I only had like, you know, probably um, 10, 20 million dollars. Not million dollars. <laughs> 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 so there's a problem. Like, <laughs> Hard to buy water. 20 million dollars, huh? Like 10, 20 thousand US dollars mm -hmm. in my pocket. Yeah. And, you know, like, uh, Korean church is kind of a different, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you fail. Right. That means everything. You, know, you can't do your business again and again. So, um, in the first place, I was like so scared. You know, yeah. Am I doing something right? You know, am I the right one to do this business? 
but you know, it's my life. Sure. Right. I just wanted to run my own, uh, run for my own dream. Right. So I just quit my job. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are going through that thought process right now. Right. Do you think that in Korea, how do you guys in Korea? Failure from love, no throw us all. Okay. How did you fight that? How did you kind of move through the fact that ah, you just won that, but it's like how was your process? What made you say I'm gonna do this? I'm gonna try my best because yeah, part of what was the question? <laughs> how did you get past the cultural part? Oh, all right. The fact that you know that when you do this, everyone's got not everyone, but in Korea especially, right? You're kind of going against the grain of the cultural norm here. How did you fight against that? Um, I don't know. Is like. I always think um, I never thought about me my, my, myself, you know, doing other other like founding other company. You know, this is the only company that I'm thinking of right now. So I always tell uh, my friends, you know, if I fail this company, mm -hmm. then uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that was the end of my life, and uh, that makes me feel like comfortable. Sure. You know, yeah, that I'm going to do my best for this. One. This company, so I don't give a shit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you made a heck of a decision because in about five months you had 2.7 million users, I believe. Those five months? In, in the first five months, I think you had. I think those, um, I don't know, I can't remember. I think you had a massive number of yeah, users bro. very, very early. Right. What, start, what sparked that? How did you get from zero users to a few million so quickly? So, um, you know, my company, okay, first I think I have to tell these people about me. Yeah, we're right? Me. So what we're doing is uh, we're building trans translation engine. What I mean is, uh, let's say, is there like any cream down here? Mm -hmm. Okay, there. There you can see like a bunch of creams. Like you type in down there. <laughs> if I ask you to translate that into English, can you tell me how you can do it? Using the mobile phone. How do most people do you translate things that are difficult? Right. Like if you go to a Chinese restaurant and you see Chinese menus down there, and how can you translate that Chinese into English? Any personal experiences out there? Google, Google, Translate. Google, Translate. Google Translate. How, how can you use Google to translate that into English? You know, it's like written on the, on the wall. Ah. You take a picture. You take a picture. But it's like handwriting. So it's not Have you ever tried that? It, it never works. So there's no way. Okay. Right. And, uh, you know, if you go to China, let's say if you go to Saudi Arabia, you know, where, I, where I'm from, and where um, Burris is from, right? Yeah. And, um, and you guys are looking for an interpreter who speaks English and Arabic. How can you get one? Anybody? Oh yeah, that takes time, right? Yeah, that takes time, right? So we just we just wanted to make a platform between translators and investors. So if you are traveling to Saudi Arabia, you know what you can do is like, I want to look for an interpreter who lives in Saudi Arabia, who speaks English and Arabic, and who gonna take like ten dollars within an hour. So you just type that number, and you can get the list of interpreters, and you can just pick one, and you can meet him, and you can do your business, right? And for those handwritings, what you can do is you can just take a picture and we shoot out those pictures to a lot of people who speak both uh, Chinese and English. And those people with a bit of time, they just gather in and they just add translation. You can get the translation within like a minute. A minute? Right. So let's talk about that. I think it's one thing to take a picture of it and get it within a day. Right. But how did you develop a platform where people get it almost instantly? Right. How did you develop So in the first place, we had no translators, mm -hmm. no orchestras. So we did so I'm gonna mix it with yeah. Korean English. So we didn't have um, translators nor requesters. The only translator we had was myself. So you were behind the computer translating right. for Arabic, for all these different languages. No, from Korean language. to English. Okay. By the time back in like 2012, yeah. the side was like really hot. Right. right. He had like tons of uh, global fans around okay. the world. But he only tweeted it in Korean. So what I've done is like translating his tweets into uh, English. Interesting. Okay. Right. And then I sent my um, translation to Sai oh. like thousands of times a day. You mean you would tweet it back to him? Right. Okay. Using macro system. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean. So whenever Sai tweets in Korean, he, yeah. he, he will gonna get the translation thousands of times a day. Interesting. Right. And we're gonna see that. 
what is he doing? Yeah, yeah. And he finds out that um, I was actually translating his tweet. So he started to retweet my translation oh, on his tweet. Okay. So that's how I got users into it on the platform in the first place. Wow, so all day you kind of watch his feed. Right. He'd say something and you just... All okay, K-pop stars like Super Junior, like Big Bang, wow. Psy. So I just became a huge fan of those uh, wow. albums. And so, then right. you slowly built up kind of that... Right, and what we actually um, always said is like, you know, if fans, they translate their stars' tweets into different languages, mm -hmm. we're gonna get them like souvenirs from stars. Okay. But we didn't have any connection between like um, entertainment agencies. Sure. So we just set it in the first place, and then all the fans they get into our platform, they just started to translate their tweets into different languages, and then we brought all the data to entertainment agencies. Got it. And asked them to give us souvenirs. Wow. So you really kind of took advantage of this entertainment K-pop wave, right? Knowing that there was a huge level of fans. Started to recruit other people to do what you were doing, which right. was already translating famous people's tweets. Right. And then that's how you built your kind of system or right. network of translators. Right. And then right after that, we pushed like other requests to those translators so that they can actually translate other uh, texts and, and images as well. What incentivized someone to do that though? Why, why does somebody want to translate? For like fans, you know. They feel like they're like you know they always want to devote themselves to stars, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what kind of motivation. That is it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like you know if you translate size tweets into different languages, mm -hmm. you know Sai who gonna recognize you sure. as a like a top translator. Mm -hmm. So it became a motivation to translators in the first place. Okay. And then if they translate other um, like content, like text and images from requesters, mm -hmm. we start. To, uh, to send out money. Got you. Oh, you did? Right. Okay. So if you do a translation like an hour, like two hours a day, mm -hmm. you can actually make um, $20, $30. Wow. In an hour. And where does that revenue come from? How do you generate that? So those requesters, they have to buy a portal before they right. ask for the uh, translation. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So give me a sense of numbers. How many translators do you have now? We have uh, more than one million translators. We have over a million translators. Right. And how many pieces of content are being translated every day? Every, every day is uh, 70,000. 70,000. Right. Wow. And so the, the business model, walk us through your business model. It's like most of the cases are uh, business letters, you know, translating business letters. For example, like you're sending out business letters to your um, global partners. Sure. Let's say you only speak Korean, mm -hmm. even though you got like high score in Awful, yeah, totally. You know, that doesn't make you uh, sure it doesn't translate into business language, right? So, uh, you know, machine translation is getting better. Mm -hmm. Google Translate is obviously, but if I ask you to use Google Translate to translate your business letter into sure. English, can you use it? Yeah, I've done this many times, and it doesn't work, right? <laughs> and if you ask uh, professional translators to translate your uh, business letter into other language, you gotta wait like two. Two days, sure. And you have to pay more than like fifty, sixty dollars. <laughs> but if you use our platform, uh, you can get the translation within an hour. You only have to pay like one to two dollars. Got it. Wow. So it's cheap, fast, and efficient. Right. So um, that's how we got all the users from different countries. Got it. And we, um, we, uh, as I told you, know, we translate all SNS, like tweet feeds, and uh, Facebook feeds as well. So we bring all the data. And we sell those data to um, like companies like Naver, nice. where they make machine translations. So if you search um, like some specific vocabulary of Naver dictionary, mm -hmm. then you can see the usage examples down below. Mm -hmm. And all those, most of the um, usage examples below came from our database. Sure. Ah, okay. So you're going to make money. You have a million translators now, mm -hmm. but at one point you had zero. How did you scale? That must have been a huge challenge for you guys. Even you know if you even even you type Plato on Twitter right now in Korean or in English, you see a bunch of people talking about our service because you know um, celebrities right now sure. in different countries they're actually using our service. Yeah. So they're recording their voice using our application, and then there's like someone out there translating their voice into different languages. Got it. And if you if you type our um, like Plato on Twitter. And you can see all those links mm -hmm. from our website or from our service. Gotcha. So that brings other users to our platform as well. Got it. Right. How many people working now at Flow? 
So right now in Korea, it's um, almost 30. And in, in China, we have um, seven Chinese employees. So a big challenge for many entrepreneurs is always finding great talent and recruiting. What's kind of your secret sauce? You have 30 great employees. Mm -hmm. How did you recruit these people? I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, you must have some secret sauce here. 30 report. Oh, Whoa. Yeah. Recruiting 30 people is tough. Ah, OK. Speak much louder. All right. So um, I, I um, honestly, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I can say this or not. I lied to them. You, know? you lied to them. Right. That's a great <laughs> tactic. In order to recruit gay talent, you were lying to them. <laughs> what I mean is, like, I know what's going to happen in the future, right? Mm -hmm. But we have a dream. Sure. So uh, I tell them, you know, what I'm thinking of and what we are actually building and what we're doing right now and what kind of value that we're actually given in this sure. world. So if they like it, you know, they just hop in. Yeah. That's how we got a three three right. So I don't, I don't think you're lying. I think you're just being aspirational, right? You're kind of, you're, Whoa, part of your know. job is to inspire people. That's, to that's kind of, um, you know, if it's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it aspirational. Right. Right? You say you have seven employees in China right now. Right. So what's it like to recruit in China? Is it a completely different style of recruiting in Korea? Or I know a lot of people are thinking about going global. China's a huge market. How do you kind of think about the Chinese market when recruiting and building your business out there? So um, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of Koreans and even those um, companies in states, you know, they want to expand their market in China. Yes. But it's kind of, um, what I say is like, it's kind of impossible. You think it's impossible? Right. Yeah. Because only Chinese, they can get license, like ICP license. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Only Chinese are big, like able to do their business in China, like IT business. Mm -hmm. So um, it was really tricky for us to set our office in China. It took us like almost a year wow. to set our office and get license and everything. And still, you know, honestly, we don't know that we were doing the right thing or not. We're just uh, living in ourselves. Sure. So when you made the decision to go into China, though, what were, I mean, you, you yourself said it was a very difficult market to get mm -hmm. into. If you're not a local player, it's hard to go in there. What made you eventually say, hey, it's worth it. Let's go do this. Well, you're a young company, uh, but you're going to spend resources there. What was the final thing that pushed you over to say, we're going into the Chinese market? Because you know, there, um, you can definitely see the money in China, you know, right? Sure. And their market is growing really fast and they're doing business in global countries. Mm -hmm. So the need in translation is growing really fast in China. Mm -hmm. So we thought it's like, you know, if we can do our business in China, mm -hmm. then we can like triple our um, our size. Got it. Like globally. So it made us to, you know, take our chance and sure. do our business in China. So we have a lot of entrepreneurs here, a lot of people thinking about starting their own company, or people who have started their company facing a lot of challenges. What were some of the biggest challenges you faced um, when starting your company? Um, Did you make an account? Yeah, well, <laughs> I think, you know, just like other guys, you know, every day, every single day, I face a like, new challenge. And because I had no experience before, you know, I didn't know what to do. People like how to hire employees, you know, all those accountings and everything. Sure. But these days, you know, what I feel is like the most difficult thing is like relation. Building mm -hmm. relationships. Yeah, with the uh, employees. Yeah. Right. It's getting more difficult and difficult. Why is that? Do you think it's because your company is bigger and bigger? It's harder to keep. Because I get to talk to every single employees. Mm -hmm. It was like less than like ten. But now it's like almost 40, Got it. including like employees in China. Mm -hmm. So I had no time to talk to them like individually. Mm -hmm. So it makes me, I don't know, it's, it's, um, I don't know, it, it makes me harder to know what they're thinking. Sure. Right? And what they're facing right now. Mm -hmm. So what I think is like, you know, if my company grows like bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. it will be more and more difficult. Yeah. That's what I think, right? Sounds like you really love having a close relationship with the people you work with, and as you scale, it gets harder and harder to kind of right. stay that kind of tight in. Like, one of the best ones. Sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, so funding-wise, that's another big issue that a lot of people are always curious about. How did you approach funding, getting financing? 
Um, is it something that's always on your mind, or did you always try to maybe not receive funding and try to fight it through it? So we've never, um, we've never done an IR. Mm. Never. Never. Wow. And you never had it. You never had the ambitions to. You don't think you need it. No, we actually we secured uh, five million dollars okay. from four different investors. Um, you know, we we just stayed in our office. And it was very lucky for us to meet those investors. They just, um, came to our office and they they listened to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. They just decided that they were the best on the company. Well, five million dollars is a lot of money, though. So, right. how do how do you how do, how does it begin? How does that process even begin? How does that just happen? Were you really just sitting in your office and people just came in and said, "Yo, we want to give you five mil. This is awesome." <laughs> yeah, well, it was like that. It was like yeah, that. Right? Okay. Well, so, well, you guys are all working with you, hard, then you should just be staying at home. Actually, I was working mm, as an investor before. Okay. So I knew like several investors. Mm -hmm. So we were at the networking party, yeah. and I, I, I told them that I'm going to keep my job, I'm going to start my own company. Okay. And they asked me, like, what kind of company? And I started to uh, introducing my company to them. Mm -hmm. And they said, um, Simon, we're going to get an investment. I'm like, well, you know, probably. Yeah. And they said, well, how about um, 800,000 US dollars? Mm -hmm. As a seed round, just a seed round. Right, as yeah. a seed round. So I said, oh, that's great. That's how I investment in the first place. <laughs> okay, you think it's really easy. And then in terms of valuation, was that a big, any tips for people when they think about valuation? Um, you know, you were, you were on both sides. You were an investor and you're an entrepreneur. So let's talk about as an entrepreneur. You have investors coming to you, they're always kind of lowering your valuation, mm -hmm. and you're trying to elevate. How do you kind of battle that and find a happy uh, medium to agree on a good valuation for your company? Well, thanks to our um, current investor, TSC. Mm -hmm. No, um, they they gave us really good valuation even in the first place. From the first place, right? So you just go to parties, you just get millions of dollars, right. and they give you good valuations. Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> so amazing. No, I really love um, those guys here, DSC guys. Yeah, I love them. Right. I never met them, but I love them too. <laughs> you know, D. You know what it stands for, like DSC? No. D is a dream. Dream. Like DSC, right? The S is a shelter. Okay. The C is a charity. So I'll be, uh, I'll be a shelter for you too, mm -hmm. and if you make money, yeah. let's go out for charity. Got it. Right. So the CEO, Mr. Yin, is um, a really good guy. So what he thought in the first place, like, is that what you're doing? I don't know that I'm going to success or not, mm -hmm. but I, I just like the way of you thinking. I see. So I'm going to buy your jewel, sure. and I'm going to invest $800,000 with wow. a good valuation. Wow. So it sounds like... You found a great investor who believed not just in your product but your vision. Okay. So the vision really matters. And then it also matters that you built a good relationship personally with him as well. Right. right. So when you're on the other side, when you're an investor, what were some of the things that really impressed you when people pitched to you? Because you must have gone through many pitches. What are some of the things as entrepreneurs pitch to investors? What stands out to you? What's something that people should always remember to do when they, when they pitch an investor? Uh, when I pitched to investors? No, when you were on the investors. Right. The investors. Well, like be, being honest, I think is the best thing. Mm -hmm. It's like not making exaggeration or sure. bluffing yourself. It's like, you know, just tell them what you have yeah. and, and be confident. Do you think sometimes people overinflate what they're doing? And right, that's what most of people are doing. Yeah. But we can definitely tell, you know. <laughs> oh, really? Right. <laughs> And how do you do that? Well, I mean, like, you know, people, we can that's actually that's see, right? Sure. We can actually tell them that that makes sense or not, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Uh, so moving forward, Flitto, what is the big vision? I mean, where do you see yourself in three or five years? Where do you want Flitto to be? So instead of people saying, uh, translate this, mm -hmm. we want people to say, Flitto this. Flitto this. Right. Mm -hmm. So like you know, these days people just say yeah, Google it. Google it, yeah. Right. So we want people to say like Flitto it instead of saying like translate it. Flitto that. Right. Flitto the heck out of that. Right. Yeah. And we're getting all of those data from like museums like in every um, historical places. Mm -hmm. right? like, if you take a picture of this side, yeah. we can get all this GPS information. This side right here. Yeah, you know, you're using your phone, right? Mm -hmm. And using our um, application, we can get to translation. Sure. So if other other guy you know, takes a picture in a similar location, you know, he or she doesn't have to wait 
for the translation because you know there's a data inside of our, our system. Interesting. So we push our translation back into its uh, application. Got it. So what you can do is so you can bring our application and you can go to some like different places and you don't have to take a picture, you just put your phone there and you can get the translation right away within a second. So we are right now building that system and I think you know you want you, you I think you can use that application by uh, probably early next year. Wow. Okay, so it sounds like you're gonna just kind of reinvent the language. No one will use the word translate and they will just use it up. Right. That's an awesome goal. That's awesome. So we have 30 people now. Uh, how many of those are engineers and marketing? How, break it down for us with your company. It's like 50% engineers. Okay. And the other 50% is marketing. Got it. Person. Finding engineers is always kind of a tough battle. Where do you find great engineers? So um, we have like two co-founders, mm -hmm. and they have um, engineer backgrounds. And they always look for um, good engineers with like high salary. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Did you get that high salary, right? <laughs> so, but in Korea, I mean, how do you, where do you go? Uh, do you go to colleges? Do you try to uh, recruit out of big companies? How do you get, you see you have 30 people, so you have 15 great engineers. Where do you where do you find these great talents? Oh, well, like everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Like this kind of networking party, you know, you can talk to these guys. Sure. And then, you know, if you think this guy's good, then you can get, get in touch with him. Yeah. And you can see how he's doing. Right. And, you know, we can find like, good guys like everywhere. When it's early on and you don't have the ability to pay a high salary, which a lot of CEOs you know, are always battling, you know, they find someone great, right. they want to recruit them in, right. but it's very hard to give them the salary that they want. How do you kind of negotiate whether or not you split up cash and equity in a startup? How do you balance that with recruiting people? Now, even when we started our business in the first place, we, we actually uh, we paid a really high salary. Right from the get-go? Right. Okay. Because, you know, me and uh, other two co-founders, you know, we didn't get anything. Mm -hmm. So you guys didn't pay yourselves at all? No. Wow. Right. How did you just kind of survive? I don't know, like eating uh, ramen right. every day. Right? Right. Yeah. Pizza. 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 You just got to start up events and eat pizza. Right. Yeah, I so just uh, right. ate three pieces of pizza. You can take this water. Right. right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring uh, two of them. Okay. <laughs> So that's it. That's really interesting. So I haven't actually heard that a lot. So you really you believe in paying people the salary they deserve right from the beginning, right? Because you know you can't just tell them you know we're gonna like, you know we're gonna give you like better compositions next time, mm -hmm. right? We can just give them that kind of hope. Sure. Right. We have to show them you know what we got. Right. So you know even from the first place, we just give them a high salary. Gotcha. I think one of the things that was really interesting though is you started generating revenue probably from the very beginning where you didn't even need funding. So when did you just kind of start seeing your the revenue coming in spike? Was it first five months, first year? When did you kind of see? So revenue? we actually, we never thought about like making money. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, the current investors, they, they really wanted to see a penny. Sure, of course. Right. Yeah. So they always ask me like, Simon, do you think you can actually make money with your um, platform your service. I always told them I we can definitely we can actually sell our database to big companies mm -hmm. like Microsoft and um, like Naver. Sure. And I'm sure that they're gonna need they they they're gonna need our database. Mm -hmm. But our investors, you know, they're like they're kind of um, you know they're not sure about it. Sure. Because they 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 never thought this kind of um, business model before. Yeah. So we just started to sell our database to those kind of ID companies, mm -hmm. and you know, they just bought it. And so that is a subscription package, uh, one one-off buys, or how do you kind of package that? It's like one data post, like pay one, or, mm -hmm. and they buy like a million data posts a uh, wow. month. Okay. Like each companies. So they're buying kind of a prepackaged amount of translations, and then they use it as points and currency. Right, so if you ask for translation using our application, like short text, mm -hmm. then you're going to get the translation. Okay. So we sell those data. I see. And like those ID companies, they use um, that data post as their like, use example mm -hmm. on their dictionary. Right. Where do you see the most uh, translations happening globally? I mean, is it here in Korea because you're not based here, or do you see, I see it taking... We only have like, less than 10% of um, Korean users. Wait, less than 10%. Right. So where are the majority of your users? Um, Indonesia, Japan, China, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. 
the states, yeah. France, Spain, DC, same question. And how did you how do you think your app got picked up there? I mean, did you guys spend marketing dollars there, or it just naturally happened? Um, K-pop stars. K-pop stars. Yeah. So I, I love Sai, right? And so it sounds like you have a very strong relationship with. You no, know what, what he signed, he actually tweeted. It's like usefield.com. Okay, well that's game over. Right, and like Super Junior. Yeah. And all those big K-pop stars yeah. on their Twitter, they tweeted like usefield.com. We, we we don't know who they are. Got it. Right, like like personally, I don't know who they are. Sure, sure. And they just said, you know, it's so cool. Use Fido. Wow. Does Girls Generation use it too? Uh, no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but but FX. FX. Yeah, they're music. Okay. And yeah, that's how um, we brought all these good users still. Mm -hmm. The Henry, you know, the, the guy Henry? Yeah. The Chinese guy. Sure. Is it Chinese Canadian? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Do you guys know Henry? Huh? Henry Law? Taiwanese Canadian? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so he used our service like uh, three times a day. Wow. And he put like Fleetle.com at the end of his tweet. So you just always had a natural ambassador, and these ambassadors were K-pop stars, so you just had a massive number of users right. on the service already. So I, I, I love these guys. It sounds like the strategy, really, is stay home and you'll get funded. Pay <laughs> <laughs> and engineers a lot of money. And tweet at Sai, and you will have great success with your company. No, what I mean is, like, you know, I um, I spent like 16 years in different countries. You know, mm -hmm. in my mind, I always thought about this translation system. Yeah, yeah. For like entire my life. Mm -hmm. So when I started my business back in 2012, I just knew what I had to do. Yeah. So it's easier for me to do my business. Sure. And build up this platform, mm -hmm. the application. And I started my business back in 2007. I failed, failed, failed. I failed for like six, seven years. Sure. I didn't, I didn't know what to do, right? But in uh, 2012, like people, they started to use a smartphone. Mm -hmm. And I just realized, uh, I think it's the right time for me to do my business. And this time, I think I can do it right. Got it. You know, I want to talk, to, talk touch upon that a little bit. So you said you failed and failed and failed and failed. Right. But you kept going. Right. What keeps you motivated to get back up when you fail? Why, why not just go back and do another big company and stop? Stop failing in your eyes. It's, you know, I, I just thought I could do better. Mm -hmm. Always, you know, when I when I fail, then I I thought like I think I can do better next time. I can do better next time. Sure, do better next time. Right. So it sounds like you just had a great amount of self motivation. Right. And does that come from parents, family, friends? I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe from uh, Saudi I don't know. <laughs> Saudi Arabia. <laughs> from Saudi. Yeah, oh yeah, I survived in. Um, Sure. It's right. <laughs> yeah. So you can survive anything. Right. Uh, one of the last topics I want to talk about is just the Korean startup ecosystem as a whole. Obviously, you're starting to see these kind of groups pop up more and more. Um, what excites you about the Korean startup system? I mean, this is blowing up. I mean, you're a big part of it. Um, what excites you about it? Yeah. Back in 2007, when I started my first um, company, mm -hmm. you know, there were nothing. Yeah. Like no accelerators, no incubator. Sure. Nothing. Else. So I was actually looking for an investor, but I couldn't find one. Well, but you know, TCs, like all this um, like system, like everything is getting better and better. You know, I see a lot of uh, young people trying to go for their own dream. You know, it's like current is kind of different. You know what I'm saying, right? Totally. So your parents they always ask you to get a job for a big company. Sure. Like Samsung, LG, mm -hmm. like SK. All our wonderful sponsors, which we're really, really happy about. Uh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think it's like, I don't, I don't think you know that's bad, but yeah. still, uh, like young, smart people, you know, what I think is, you know, what they have to do is like they have to grow the market size of their own, co own country. Mm -hmm. That's what they gotta do. But in Korea, you know, if you um, if you go to a good university, mm -hmm. like Seoul, like Korea, you sure. say, you know, what, what they do in, in university is like they study to become public officer, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the place, you know, where you can do the same stuff, like, sure. you know, right? Because, you know, they don't, they don't want to take all the risk. But these days, I see uh, lots and lots of young people, like small people, you know, like taking risk yeah. and try to do their best to go for their own dreams. Sure. So I think you know that's the uh, most important thing. Mm -hmm. And 
which is a huge difference yeah. compared to the 2007 F9 grade. When you first started your company, and there are a lot of people doing that here, what are kind of the three main lessons maybe you would give people? Like, hey, these are the things that I, I had trouble with, I failed, or it was really hard. So when you start your company, kind of avoid these three hurdles. Or anything that really comes to your mind, they said, God, if someone had told me before about this, I would have avoided it, but no one told me I had some. Any kind of pieces of advice you give uh, young entrepreneurs? Well, yeah, well, uh, when you talk to investors, you know, you're not actually paying for the money. Mm -hmm. You know, investors invest on your company. Sure. So, you gotta be, um, you gotta be strong. You know, what I mean is like, you know, whenever you, you stand right in front of investors, you know, you just feel like, you yeah, know, like a small little person. Right, right. You know, what do I have to do to get this money? Sure. But, be confident, you know, and say, the reason they're investing for your company is for their own good. Mm -hmm. It's not, they're not trying to help you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't be small in front of those uh, right. investors. Right? You stand up, be proud of what you build. Right. Uh, yeah. And um, the most important thing while you're doing your own business is mm -hmm. like your employees. Your employees. Right. And the family, you know, they're the one are actually building your platform mm -hmm. and service. Sure. So you gotta keep good relation yeah. with your employees. So at Penny Mejo, we have a great company culture. It's all about employee happiness. We do right. a lot of fun things. What are some of the things you do at your company that, like you said, to kind of keep employees happy? Do you do anything special? Birthdays? We have a barbecue place. Barbecue. And, uh, we have a, a, a four bunk beds. Yeah, bunk beds. Right. In the office. Yeah, right. Wow. We have shower and we have a, a, a place where you can actually watch a movie. Wow. So and people sleep, eat. Free breakfast, free lunch, free dinner. Yeah. And free uh, fitness club. Wow. And every single week, uh, K-pop stars they visit our office. Okay, I'm coming. Right. I mean, just because I want to sleep, I don't have to This is lovely. That's awesome. Right. Because, you know, they, they stop by our office to say thank you. Wow. We're translating our to different languages. Wow. Okay. It's like you know, really famous stars here in the office every single week. So when Sohyun from Sunshine comes, you can call me and I will come right over. Definitely. Okay. 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 She's not my time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we have about 15 minutes left and we're going to open up questions uh, to the audience. So, um, anybody have a question? Okay. Let's start right here. Or, well, let's start right here. And, oh. Yeah, thanks for your support. Okay, hi, um, my name is Kelly. Um, I just want to know how you came up with that tweeting side idea. Like, did you like sit there with your co-founder, like talk to him, like had a meeting, or, or just like randomly came up? So, um, my other two co-founders are engineers, you know, they have things to do, right? But me, you know, I'm, I'm the marketer, right? Yeah. So for them, you know, uh, probably they thought they're not doing nothing. So I gotta do, th I, I had to do things. <laughs> so I just pretended uh, that I'm doing something. So I just <laughs> You're pretending of doing something. Right, so cool. I just find out, okay, if there's, if there's no chance here, mm -hmm. then I'll be the one. Yeah. And what, what should I chance Sure. Well, probably Sai, you know, Gangnam Sao was really famous by the time, so I just uh, started to, Translating. It was very spontaneous. You don't really talk much. Mm, well, no, actually, um, I I told my co-founders that if I translate his tweets into different languages, and if I send out my translations to Sai again, then definitely he'll gonna recognize my translation and we're gonna retweet it. How many tweets did it take before he retweeted? How many times do you really have to get going? Uh, or recognize why this is cool. Probably a month. A month. <coughs> wow. Okay. So you were you were hanging him up for a month straight. Right. I translated um, like Sai, all different K-pop stars and Chinese stars and um, like Brazilian stars. Wow. You know, like okay. writers, <laughs> and most of them they retweeted my translation. Got it. Right. That's really cool. I think it's really really innovative. Very interesting. And then we had a question in the back. Oh. Yeah. Wait I actually don't want to use the perfect, but I was going to ask an engineering question. That's okay. Uh, what? Engineering question. Right. Yeah, get rid of the code. Um, 
for your customers in China, there's a big lag when you're trying to get outside of China into the rest of the world. So do you, how do you distribute your hardware so that your customers in China are able to access your service quickly? So we have two APK system. So one is for like global users, one is for Chinese users, but we share the same server. So that's what we do, right? Because you know, if you try to bring out your APK, like the, the APK you use to China, it never works down there. And we have SNS translation system in our service, but they never let you put a Twitter translation system for Chinese application. So Just uh, for people that may not know what APK is, can you describe what that is? I don't know either. APK is an uh, application file. Yeah, well, yeah, application, right. Does everyone actually know what that is? And I'm the only one that does it. <laughs> Next question, though. Right. <laughs> so you know what APK is, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. I was actually, I was wondering actually where your server is. Oh, you're using the wrong question. Yeah. <laughs> like, are they, do you have, you, like you said, We duplicated our server. You duplicated right. it without it, Right. Cool. Uh, yes. Question? Okay. I'm sorry, I stepped out momentarily, so I don't know if I'm asking a similar question, but um, right, right now with Fleeto, I noticed that it's, it's mostly like short form content driven. And um, you, you mentioned earlier about business letters, which is like a really like long form content. Um, it, are, do you feel that your users are more responsive to like things that are like tweets or short form? And are, like, has anybody asked that? No. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm wondering, like, uh, are your users incentivized to take the time to answer a piece of long form content and translate it? So, um, what we're trying to make is like one on one translation system, not like short text translation system. What I mean is like we're trying to build a shared economy of translation. For example, you know, if you're trying to ask for translation. For example, like you know, if you want to translate one A4 size paper into Chinese, what can you do? You're gonna go to neighbor, type a translation to Chinese, and you wanna see all different websites, and you put your or you upload your file up there, sure. and you're gonna get an estimation within like two three hours, and you ask for the translation, and you don't know actually which one is translating your paper, right? And you're gonna get a result, sure. and you pay like forty dollars. And agencies, they take about twenty dollars, which is fifty percent. So what we're trying to do is that just like Airbnb, you can find right translator for your papers. I see. You type, I want to translate uh, this A4 size size paper. Uh, I just want to pay like probably like twenty dollars or less than twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. And this this paper is about um, probably like entertainment and you set all these numbers and everything, and then we give you a list of translators. And you get in there, and you can see history of translations that translators actually make. And you can pick the right one and ask for the translation. It's just an Airbnb system, right? So, uh, so what we had to do was uh, build out credibility for each translators and escrow function. So for credibility function, we had to make them to translate short texts. So that actually you can find out if this translator is good or not. So that's how we first started to translate short texts from SNS and send them to translate those into different languages. I like the term you use, the shared economy of translations. Right? Right. Yeah, I think it's a great way to kind of summarize your business. Absolutely. Um, any other questions we have? Yes. We'll just, Jim's coming right behind you. Hi, my name is Mike. So my question is, Simon, what do you consider a major threat to your business? Uh, it's very, um, it's very easy, you know. Um, like big companies doing our business, right? Like always, you know, people they ask us. So what happens if, like, neighbor, you know, they do your business? What do they do? Oh, there's no way, right? You know. Honestly, you know, they do it. Cool, you know, good for that, right? So, you are the most relaxed CEO. I have. <laughs> this is the coolest CEO I have. Like, tweeting that side. No, because you know, if you try to find, like, if you try to tell them like some stupid answer, you know, you, you have to, I think you have to make a lie about it. 
It's what I think is that there's no way. The only way you can do it is like you have to grow your business faster than that. Sure. Because you know it's a startup. You know, you can move faster. Mm -hmm. So all you can do is you can move faster. You're agile, yeah. you have you have right. a better advantage to be. You can never say, you know, we can beat them up. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the big companies, they have money. Yeah. They got everything. Yeah. So all you can do is like, move faster than that. Sure. Just punch them in the stomach. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions for Simon? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as soon as I uh, signed up uh, today uh, about a week ago, so uh, I, I, I made an account in Fredo. Uh, okay, can you repeat that? Yeah, hi. Uh, yes, uh, about a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, um, as soon as I, I came to know about this uh, event today, uh, I, made, I made myself an account on Fredo, and uh, I guess. Uh, as of today, I accumulate or like, I accumulated like uh, fourteen thousand five hundred points or so. It's near like fourteen point five dollars, and the reason is um, because I wanted to see myself that um, a neural site that it indicates that once you accumulate uh, five, 50, fifty fifty points, right. you can uh, cash out the you, can, you can exchange it to a PayPal money. Right. Can you? Uh, Give us some more detail about it. Uh, how how you contacted PayPal and how you make made a deal with PayPal. That's a great question. So um, you know, first if you uh, sign up for our application, you know, we don't know how good you are as in as in translator, right? So we give you short text for like probably two three months, and then that, that gives you that that like you know makes us to understand how good you are. And if you're good enough, then you can get one-on-one -on -one translation requests. And if you make more than 50,000 points using PayPal, you can actually cash out into real money. And you can make a bank account, and you connect your bank account with PayPal, and then you can actually draw money to you know, your account. So I guess you have to uh, contact PayPal and make a big account. Right, right. It's very simple. It only takes less than a minute. So it's, it's not something unique between your company and people? No, 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 no. Right. So it seems like it's just a product or API integration. Right, right. Okay. Right. So um, there's like some students in Indonesia, they actually make like thousands of dollars a month. Thousands? They're, right. Wow. They're, they're students. They just do translations for hours a day and they make a big pocket money with it. And how often do they get paid? How often? Two weeks? Yeah. How, how is it just they can, you know, when your um, points say go over like fifty thousand, you can actually draw into real money. Right. Right. Wow. So, what so is the most someone has ever made on your platform? Uh, you know, like a a month is about like uh, three thousand. Three thousand dollars. Right. How much? And how many hours does that kind of translate to translations? I don't know. Just like four or five hours a day. Four five hours a day. Right. Okay. Except right. weekends. That's a lot of your money. Right. Yeah. So I, I do a translation by myself as well. Is that how you <laughs> on my way, right? On my way to some way. And you know, you can actually exchange your points into um, like foods and like snacks and convenience store. Oh really? Right. So there's credit. Do you have a partnership with Seven Eleven or anything like that? Right. So um, uh, if you translate thirty minutes a, a day uh -huh. on your way to work, yeah, you can actually buy ramen. Wow. With a pita. <laughs> this, this is very great. Love it. That makes you a good breakfast. Yeah, 100. Yeah. 30 minutes on the subway, which most people have to take anyway, and you can buy rum. Right. Yeah. You're gonna get nothing if you just play um, sugar, sugar. Candy Crush. Yeah, Candy Crush. Yeah, sugar Candy Crush. Candy Crush. <laughs> Translating stuff. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Oh shoot. Uh, we'll just try to bang bang. Do the last two. Oh, who is it? Right. Purple shirt. Mark. You're closer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving me. Yeah. Thanks for giving me a chance. Uh, I just visited your site, and it looks like a much more the uh, casual translation. It's focused on the casual translation. But I wonder if you have any plan or you do what you are doing of uh, some kind of more, more technical or professional translation service and I think it's much more important and it can it can bring you more, more profit. profit yes. Right. 
So we are doing a professional translators as well. Ah, translation, yeah. right. So um, for like those people who want casual translation, what I mean is like if you only want to pay, let's say five dollars per uh, one A4 page, you can ask for, for like university students on our websites, you know, and they're gonna do some casual translation for you. But if you need like professional translation, you can look for professional translators on our website. And if you search translators, they want to give you a list of translators and professional translators, then you can ask them to translate your whatever, your material. And you only have to pay about 70% compared to other agencies because you know, we don't, we take nothing. And no, no commission. Unless that's 3%, actually. Right? Just like Airbnb. Yeah. And final question was right, right here. That's a simple question. How do you control mistranslate? Because translate is uh, only on the online, and you don't control the. Right, that's a, that's a really good question. What do you control? Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Uh, I was talking about share economy, right? So you, you find really nice things, like nice picture of a house from Airbnb, and you actually you visit it there and just find out that this plate is like shit. <laughs> so who takes responsibility for that? Airbnb or the guy who provides this accommodation? Which one? Airbnb. Airbnb? So <laughs> no, I mean Or the guy who took the picture that wasn't realistic. Right. So in on Airbnb the terms and conditions is like, you know, if two places are totally different, then Airbnb takes responsibility. But it's really hard to tell this place is like totally different. Because you know, it's a picture. It's up to your perspective. Right. right. So um, you know, on the list of our translators, you can actually find out you know what kind of work he has done before. You can see all the scores of the translations he actually has made before. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you to find the right one. But if you think this translator is like real, um, you know, sure. one, then we can refund. I see. Right. And we have like tons and tons of QC guys. You know, they actually check. They can check like hundred percent of our. Of translations to check like less than ten percent to find out that this one is good or not. Right? Just talk to the user to kind of make sure that what they're getting is what they wanted, and right. um, you guys just make sure to facilitate uh, the two parties. It's right. awesome. Well, this has been an awesome conversation. Very insightful. Um, it's a very inspiring story. So I just want to thank you once again. You guys, huge round of applause for Tom. Thank you.